everybody. You're about to watch a really cool discussion I recently had with Trisha Carr of the Charmed Life podcast. We talked about thought forms, also known as tulpas, how to create them, how to uncreate them, and what they are in the first place. I think you're going to find it very fascinating. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to Trisha, you totally should. She has a podcast and a YouTube channel. I'm going to drop her links in the description box below. We're also filming another show tomorrow, by the way, and we're going to be talking about reincarnation, soul traps, and the Lords of Karma, which are not the same Lords of Karma as discussed in Theosophy. So if you're interested about this subject, I know I am, check out her channel. I think she's going to be uploading that podcast and video this weekend, and I will definitely clip it out next week so you can watch it here as well. By the way, Trisha Carr is my very talented teaching partner in the upcoming 2020 Intuitive Intensive, which starts next week. If you are looking for a dynamic, evidential, metaphysical program that will open you up and connect you to your intuitive abilities and also connect you to your spirit guides, your angels, your abilities, for example, to channel, to astrally project, to do mediumship, and so much more, check out this program at the link below. Again, we start next week. There's still time to register and I would love to see you there. All right, everybody, on to the video. I hope you enjoy it. How about you? You tell me what, if someone's never heard, what thought form is, what is, how do you describe this? Well, it's based on the reality that energy doesn't die. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away. It's just transformed. And so here in our human life, we are always existing in an energy or in a frequency. And those of us who are mindful of this, we try to exist in a frequency, as I was just talking about, which is of love and kindness and service and all of that. And then you have folks who indulge their lower vibrational nature. And so they allow themselves to be in the energy of anger and the energy of fear, the energy of lack and so on and so forth. And it's about how long you sustain that energy. For those of us that are in the frequency, high vibrational frequency of love, et cetera, we are creating energetic patterns. That energy is doing something as we're vibrating in it. It's creating things. And for us, that might look like opportunities, possibilities, serendipity, um, all of that. And also this can be deities actually, and, and beings that we worship or servitors and so on and so forth. For the folks that are on the other end of the spectrum and who are hanging out in really deeply depressive states in a sustained way, or hanging out in fear, hanging out in rage and anger and indulging this part of their nature, they are also creating patterns of energy. And we can call these tulpas, I call them thought forms. Mm -hmm. The more you indulge the energy, the more you run this energy in a sustained way, the more you develop these thought forms. And so what starts off is almost what looks like that little um, Brillo Patty kind of energy above pig pen's head in mm -hmm. the Snoopy comic, right? Yeah. Some weird chaotic energy because you're in a weird chaotic energy. What starts off is that actually has an opportunity if you indulge your lower vibration to turn into an autonomous being, yes. a being sophisticated that to some degree. Part, what did you say? I said sophisticated to some degree. Absolutely. Yeah. Very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. In the earlier stages of development, it's becoming somewhat sentient. Mm -hmm. And then it realizes that it is dependent on the energy that has created it. And so it seeks to be fed by that same energy. And as it's gaining in intelligence, it needs you to stay in the energy that allowed it to be created. And so if that was fear, then it needs you to stay afraid. If that's intoxication, then it needs you to stay intoxicated. So you continue to feed it. And if you do, these thought forms become more and more sophisticated and autonomous to the point where they don't even need you anymore. They're full blown entities. This is what poltergeists are. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, usually it's teenage, very hormonal girls who have this inner frequency that's pretty wonky and in a sustained way, causing all of these things to happen in the house. You've got noises that are being made, knocks on the wall, things are being tipped over. There seems to be a ghost. It's, it's not a ghost. The call is coming from inside the house. It's you and it's the thought form that you're creating and you're feeding in a sustained way. So there's all kinds of different thought forms, mm -hmm. um, but those are the ones that I usually, that's what I mean when I talk about them. And I can actually go into different spaces 
and I can see them. And in Hawaii, we have something called Uhani Noho, and they are intelligent energies that usually hang out within the body, sometimes within wounds, but you can also see Uhani Noho and you can see these thought forms collecting up near the ceilings in houses. I've walked through houses remotely and in person, and I've seen them everywhere. These weird Brillo pad energies, sometimes with features, and I just clear them. But the problem is I can clear them and I can clear your house, but if you don't stop signaling, whatever it is that created them, you just start creating more of them. Right. It's like if you um, got a gastro bypass surgery, well, yeah, you're going to, or if you got liposuction, let's say, or something like that, where you you kind of remove part of the issue, but your habits remain the same, well, then it's just going to reorganize itself because free will, and it will magnetize that to the intention and to the patterns. And so as, as Crystal's talking about it, on, on a very basic level, like what we're here to do is to manipulate energy, to create energy and, and as physical beings, see it out pictured in a physical reality. So uh, on the positive side, we can, th- those um, positive thought patterns and emotional and feeling patterns that we continue to, it's like, it's like again, waveform collapse. So it's beginning to become somewhat particular and it can become something very positive in our lives. So we, we can use thought form experiencing thought form creation and that's what we're here to do to benefit us and when we're doing it in the positive side then it actually is an omnidimensional experience because it is it is being created out of love and connection but when it's being done out of fear or some kind of separation energy then it's actually not omnidimensional and it is arrested more in that 4d landscape that does not mean that it when we give it power then it has power when we are unconscious of it when we give it our sovereignty then it just has it and it can feel as though like all of us again have experienced that we can't stop our habits our patterns or we're being compelled in some way because we have given our sovereignty our ability or our dominion over even if it's not consciously we don't understand it it's out of miseducation so you mentioned the thought form getting so sophisticated that it could become an entity and even it can attract a sophisticated, more more sophisticated being to match it and utilize that almost like portal that that um, to, as a feeding tube to it of needing that fear energy. Yes, absolutely. Um, not only that, but these fully autonomous thought mm-hmm. forms can. Uh, bop away from their host. They don't need the host anymore. They can go to the next door neighbor where there's similar energy and start feeding there, but they, they are quite intelligent. So they can actually manipulate the circumstances and conditions in the various places in order to set up more of what it is that they want, which is this energy. But what we must keep in mind is that which we create, we can also uncreate. And even though energy never dies or is is never destroyed, we can dissipate Mm -hmm. these thought forms sufficiently by changing our signal. And this really applies to absolutely every aspect in life. I mean, look at something like, God forbid, politics. You have people in politics who are there with a high vibration. They are seeking to shift it and change it. And through that, Um, They are able to make these great changes, but then you have people in politics who are just perpetually pissed off all the time. And so their frequency is anger and frustration. And even though they're in politics thinking they're changing it, they're actually just creating more problems and more chaos in every way. This has to do with manifestation. Mm -hmm. If I want a new house I can create the thought form by envisioning it and by putting my energy into it and by desiring it and loving it and feeling my way into the creation of it. That's also part of the process as well. And it really speaks to how profoundly powerful we are, which takes us back to kind of the first couple of weeks in the intuitive intensive. Unless you know how powerful you are, you probably shouldn't play around in the various fields because you have to have an understanding that you're the one who's controlling it. You're the one who's creating it. And sure, maybe you got yourself into a pickle and you've got a whole house filled with Uhani Noho or a whole house filled with thought forms. Well, you can clear that and you can rearrange that. You can change the inner world and your frequency and start living the life that you truly want to live in practical ways and also, again, these magical ways that we talk about. <laughs> 